Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu Akbar. 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 Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali sayyidina Muhammad Adada khalqi wa rida nafsi wa zinata arshu wa midada kalimati Bismillahi kafi, bismillahi shafi Ya hayu ya qiyum, ya hayu ya qiyum Rabbana zidna alma wa arzukna fahma wa zidna bisalihin ربنا تقبل منا بسر أسرار سورة الفاتحة. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, welcome. I see a face that I haven't seen for a long time. Uh, Sidi Yahya, welcome. I'm very, very pleased to uh, see you uh, and everyone else, of course. <clears throat> the name that we are going to do tonight, we indicated last week, uh, is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Mutakabir. Now, when we look at this name, and we hear what the meaning of this name is, then it can cause somewhat of a confusion in our minds as to how we should understand this name. Because the name in our material world, <clears throat> in our everyday life, has a very negative connotation. Um, but we'll come to that. The name only appears once in the in the Quran, um, chapter fifty-nine, verse twenty-three. He is Allah, other than whom there is no deity, the sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the bestower of faith, the overseer, the exalted in might, the compeller, the superior. In this verse, exalted is Allah above whatever they associate with him. In this verse, the, the, the translation of the word mutakabbir is superior. Um, and many of the scholars have given different uh, interpretations. But <clears throat> when we talk about being proud, in fact, um, in Sheikh Hafid Allah, um, the word haughty is used. Now, haughty is not a, a, a word that is very well known, but even the word pride um, is something that is associated with negative uh, connotations. Like you are arrogant or vain, you are full of yourself, you are boastful, um, pretentious, all of those negative things. Now, when we say Allah is al mutakabbir then how should we understand this? Is it, is it an incorrect interpretation or, or, or how should we, should we understand this name? Um, because everything that applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, can only be associated with good and greatness. So how should we interpret this name. Let me immediately throw the floor open and hear if there are any comments uh, on, on, on this uh, point that I've just raised now. I'm opening the floor now for comments. Okay, is there nobody who wants to take the first shot at this? Um, I would say only Allah has the right to them to this. Only Allah 
can be proud and haughty and superior. This, this is not a quality that is for us, but only for Allah. Allah has the right to these qualities, I would say. Yeah. And, and when it comes to man, it's considered negative, but when it comes to Allah, it's not a negative quality. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else would like to maybe add to this? Um, <clears throat> okay, let's, let's move on um, because it is exactly as uh, our sister has just said there that um, the question of being proud, I would rather use the word proud than um, You see, when I when I get into the the technology, then I I, I um, run into problems. <laughs> okay, here we are. <clears throat> when we talk about a human being being proud, it can also be considered in a positive way. <clears throat> but being pompous or arrogant or snobbish, or pretentious, those kind of meanings that we attach in our normal everyday life can never ever be applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whichever way we apply this name of al mutakabbir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must remove all the negative connotations from it. And rather, we should Look at how the scholars, different scholars, have attached meanings to it. Um, they've attached the, 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 the meaning of majestic, uh, superior, magnificent, lofty, noble, exalted. Now that sounds more correct. And any of those meanings that we take uh, and apply it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there would be no problem with it because there is in this um, reference or interpretation, um, it can be applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without it creating uh, something that disturbs our heart. Because we can't think, ever think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a negative or a bad way. Because that is never ever associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> now, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can never ever know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our minds alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unseen and invisible to the human eyes. It doesn't matter who it is, the most pious, the prophets, the awliya, the salihin, no one can actually see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not visible to the human eye. <clears throat> now, how do we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah is part of the ghaib or not part of, Allah is unseen? We can only know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a purified heart. Now, how do we uh, rectify the heart from all the negative traits in our hearts. And there are a few suggestions that has been made. <clears throat> the first thing that we said is that in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must display the correct etiquette. What does that mean? Now, because Allah's greatness is such that one can't even describe it correctly. Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly knows himself. We can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the awliya have reached the point where they are referred to as the arifin, the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nobody knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in total. Because Allah's perfection and Allah's greatness is such that nothing in the entire creation can actually comprehend 
or understand the true greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if Allah is that great, then one of the things that we need to start off with is our attitude and behavior towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is to display the kind of slavehood or lonely, lowliness. Allah is high and we are low. We must be extremely low in the presence of such greatness. Even when we come in front of our, our, our parents, there is, there is a certain required etiquette. You come in, in, in the presence of your sheikh. You come in, in the presence of your, uh, not just the local manager, but the, the, the boss of the business. Then you behave in a particular way and you know what is correct and what is not correct in the presence, how to behave in the presence of a person like that. How then should we not behave in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what the scholars have said is that the first thing is you must understand and recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of every single thing. Everything. It doesn't matter what you think of. Every single thing has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what our needs are, that needs can only be fulfilled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means that a conscious effort must be made when you are in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, when you are making salah or you are, are making dua, that you must have that feeling that you are appealing to greatness and that you are absolutely nothing, you are so low. That feeling is an important starting point. Before you even commence, you should try and put yourself in a state of mind and heart where you recognize that you are now extremely low and you're going to be in the presence of the ultimate greatness. And it should, the correct attitude should also be that we must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. But fearing to go to Jahannam is, is almost as if you are doing it for, for, uh, because you are scared of the punishment. So do it more out of being scared of the punishment than having the correct attitude of what fear should mean and what it should represent. Fear should be something that you do, uh, you are fearing to displease. You are, you are so scared to do anything in case you are doing something that Allah is not completely pleased with. Which means your heart must be in a state where you are on the lookout for where you can actually go wrong. This one about having hope in Allah's uh, mercy and Allah's pleasure and forgiveness um, should not also be taken to the other extreme. It's something that we should strive for, strive to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get His forgiveness and mercy to be showered on you. But we've also heard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is greater. His forgiveness and His mercy is greater towards the believer than His punishment and His wrath. But sometimes we go overboard, we say, Allah is so great, Allah can forgive anything, then you do what you want to do. Overplaying that part of what we are supposed to know 
but we act on it in a way where we exceed the limits. Yes, we must trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can forgive and show his mercy on us. And Allah is pleased even with small good deeds. Allah can actually uh, reward us tremendously for small deeds. But don't go to the other extreme where you as an individual want to take advantage of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking to, 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 to give us more reward and, 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 and benefit uh, rather than to, to punish us. <clears throat> and it's, it's based on this ayah, um, chapter 39, verse 53. My servants, you have transgressed against yourself. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly, Allah forgives all wrong actions. He is ever forgiving the most merciful. We, of course, know that the one wrong and the one sin that Allah does not forgive is if you put up partners to him. Uh, that is, in other places, that's made very clear. But generally, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah created us. Allah is your creator. Allah knows exactly what makes us tick? What makes us do the wrong things? What are the things that will tempt us to do what we know is wrong? And what are the things that prevent us from doing the right? Allah is our creator. Allah has put together every component in every human being to be what they are. And every single human being is different to another human being. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows Every single person individually. Not Allah knows everybody, or all the human beings together as, as a collective, yes. But Allah also knows and Allah has a personal relationship with every single person. A unique one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between every single human being. And Allah is the one who created what you are. And our test is that Allah instructs us to do certain things and then we have shaitan and, and, and the nafs and the dunya and people distracting us and Allah has given us choice now in between. But Allah knows that we are weak. Allah has made it possible for us to commit sins. Can the malaika commit sins? No. They, that, that part is not part of the design of Malaika. But the design of human beings is Allah has made it possible for us to sin. And we will sin. And if we didn't sin, then Allah would have replaced us with people who will have been given the ability to sin so that they can make tawbah and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah promises that Allah is forgiving and can forgive all sins with the exception of, of very few. As long as we know that we should never take advantage of that. Now we say... Allah is the only one who is entitled to have pride. I think our sister um, Aisha made that point. Why, why would we make a statement that Allah is the only one who is entitled to have pride? Even if we take the, the, the positive understanding which we've now clarified, why would we say that Allah is entitled to have pride? Um, but Sally, <clears throat> yes, you know. I think the 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 main aspect for me is um, the concept of him being subhanahu wa ta'ala being the creator. Because anything that we do um, and we feel proud about it, um, 
as a painter, you might feel proud about your paintings or a carpenter about his workmanship or anything that we do in our daily lives. But if you look at the source of ourselves, for one, if you look at the source of where did this paint come from, it all points towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because he has created it, he has ownership over it. And that's why pride is only for him and not for us. Subhanallah. Very good. I don't know if there's anyone who wishes to add to it because I think that there's a very, very good understanding. Is there anyone who would like to add to that? If not, then the point, the take home point out of that is that there is nothing that can be created by anyone. Nothing. No one can create anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of every single thing in the entire universe, the cosmos, in all the other different worlds that we've heard of previously in our discussions. Because if we link it to the sifat of Al-Qadir or the name Al-Qadir, the all-powerful, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one, the only one who can create effect. We might think if we use certain means that Allah has made available in the dunya for us, that that has the ability to do this or that or that. Ultimately, if you trace it back, then it is waiting on the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create that effect. We can't create effect. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can create effect, then everything in the entire universe depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is Allah not then entitled to be pleased, to, be, uh, to have pride about his creation? Because no one can create what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. No one. Okay. I think this point has been covered that I just put up. True greatness and majesty can only be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because no one else qualifies. Because whatever it is that you are claiming for yourself, if you trace it back, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is in control, who can either make it happen or not make it happen. <clears throat> if we do claim, if we do claim anything for ourselves, and we've now elaborated on the point, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can create things. Even if you're making a pot of food or you're doing the painting that Sidi Yunus spoke about and you say and you have pride in yourself and you look at the pot of food and you say, Masha Allah, this is a great pot of food that I have made. I don't think anyone else has made this dish because I tried this and that, or a painting, or whatever else, and you have a moment of weakness, and you claim it, and you take ownership of that, you are committing a grave error. And we all fall in that trap. I include myself. I include myself in that moment of being unforgetful. You say, I did this and I did that, meaning it's you. In fact, anything that we do, everything that we do, we should always try and bring in the fact that we can't do, that whatever we do is with the will, the power, 
and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when we want to do things or we do things, that's why we should add that inshallah, inshallah should be added with that understanding. I can only do if it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you claim things for yourself, you are setting yourself up as a party. And we said, well, this is a subtle, um, an indirect form of shirk. Because you are not saying that I am a God and Allah is also a God and I am setting myself up. You're not going to that extent like some of the other people. But you are claiming what belongs to Allah and that puts you up as a partner as far as that thing is concerned. Very dangerous. But look what we do. Let me take that point off. Look what we do. <laughs> um, yes, we say true greatness only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we come, especially when we, when we, we need something, you're in need now. You need a promotion or you need an increase or you need a day off. You have work now. How do you treat your boss? You treat your boss and you put him on such a pedestal because of what you want from the boss. Now this can apply at work, it can apply at home. A child to a parent or a husband to a wife or a wife to a husband, you want that something. Now you place that person on that pedestal and you believe that what you want is going to come from that person. What are you doing? May Allah forgive us when we fall in these traps. Because you're actually saying that that person has the ability to satisfy your needs, to give you the increase or permission to do whatever it is that you want to do. How dangerous. So the trap is not to put people on pedestals because of the position they occupy at work. Or the titles that they may have. It's a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a scientist, or even a sheikh. That you assign abilities to them that actually only belongs to Allah. Having said that, I want to emphasize there's a need to respect the people that you work with. Because people that, 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 that have certain functions, there must be a certain amount of the respect as long as you never assign ability to them. Always keep in mind that the one that's going to satisfy your need is Allah. Allah! Never anyone else. Only Allah, 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 Allah. That you must ingrain in yourself. Yes, you have respect, but you know things are going to come from Allah. If Allah wills that it must happen, then Allah will give it. If Allah wills that it not, then it's not, and you will be satisfied with whatever Allah has decreed. If you go into a, with that kind of attitude in any situation where you have need, you won't be disappointed whether it's good or bad, whether you get what you want, because you know ultimately Allah has decided for you, and in that might be a test. How are you going to cope, my slave, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give you? Are you going to express dissatisfaction and unhappiness with Allah's decree? Or are you going to accept it with patience and forbearance? So, don't give the lawyers and the doctors and the accountants extra special consideration but the laborer and the cleaner and the caretaker is treated and the car guard is just treated like any all out.
Don't give them special treatment because of their positions, because their positions doesn't represent anything in true reality, because that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other mistake, of course, that we make is that, um, so you, you've never missed Fajr for, uh, you've turned a, a leaf a few years back uh, and you proudly say to the person, yeah, you know, since that time that I changed over, uh, I've not missed Fajr or any of my, 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 my Salah um, at all. And you're proud about it. Uh, and you might not use those words, but you think you've covered all the bases now. So now you're going to go to Jannah. Those are the things that Allah commanded us to do, to actually claim the title of being Muslims. If you don't do those things, then that label or that title, um, it, it doesn't apply to you. So you've only done what you're supposed to do. But how do we repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all those many things? Literally millions of things from the time you are born till the time you die. Millions upon millions of things that you are totally, totally unaware of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has looked after you, cared for you, sustained you. Many of those things happen inside our own bodies. If you were to understand what's going on inside your own body, you will be a shock. You will be shocked to see how much Allah is taking care of us that we take for granted. When we get up in the morning, you say, oh, I had a nice sleep. I feel refreshed. Alhamdulillah, you say, by the way, because you feel refreshed. Even the person who is sick and he opens up his eyes the next morning, he doesn't realize it's not the fact that he's still alive. It's the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept all those delicate, intricate, complicated functions of the body going. Allah kept his temperature correct. His breathing, his uh, blood levels. There, there are so many things to be grateful for. So we can never claim, because I have done so much Salah. I think the, the example, I can't recall all the detail of it, of the one man who made Salah for 500 years. 500 years on an island cut off from people, he separated himself. There's a story that goes like that. And he just made ibadah and didn't involve himself with anything that had to do with the dunya. So the day when he, when, when he stands in front of the malaika, he says uh, to the malaika, when the malaika shows him, there's your good deeds and there's your bad deeds. Bad deeds, nothing. Good deeds, a whole mountain full. And he said, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. This is what I've worked so hard for that will take me to Jannah. Then Allah instructed the malaika, take out one of his eyes, put it on the other side of the scale. And all those deeds could not even balance the value and the benefit of one eye. That's just one eye. What about so many other things where Allah keeps disasters away from us and calamities? Every day we're on the road. There's cars driving all over the show. Uh, people crossing the road. You think it's, it's, it's natural that you should arrive at home safely? How do you qualify for that? No one qualifies for anything. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and compassion 
looking after us. So you say, no, but I drove very carefully. It doesn't matter how carefully you drive. What about the next person? What about natural disasters? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks after us in a way that we are totally, totally oblivious of. We're not even aware of that. And if you have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you could never thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can never thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly because you don't know what to thank for. There are so many things to be thankful for. That's why it's an elevated, a truly elevated form of ibadah to say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, with true meaning and feeling. Even if you don't say other things, but be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be conscious that you are saying it to the one who is looking after you every second on this planet earth. So being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the mercies is something that we can never do justice to. So never ever think that it's your deeds that's going to get you there. It's only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on top of that, you do one bad deed, you get uh, 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 written down one. You intend to do one good deed and you don't do it, you still get written up one. You intend to do, you have the near to do a good thing and you do it and you get the reward of 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful towards us. Subhanallah. And there's an ayah that says that. Uh, chapter 10, verse 27. For those who do good deeds, there shall be the best reward and yet more blessings. So Allah give, bless us beyond what we qualify for. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not great? Should we not be thankful? In fact, that's what shaitan, shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was banished. He said, you will find most of them not thankful. If we look at that, he had insight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him insight as to how we will be behaving as human beings. But we will speak, if Allah allows, inshallah, we will get to speaking about shaitan at some point. Because we talk about shaitan, but we know so very little about him. But just to say, let us not be one of those that he has referred to of those who are not thankful. I want to just pause there and uh, just to get my breath back. Uh, pause there and if there's any comments or questions that people have at this stage. Okay. Dr. Sali? <clears throat> yes. Um, the, besides the aspect of, of our, the talents that Allah has blessed us with, or our work that we do, um, I think the other aspect of knowledge um, should also be recognized as well. Um, when, we, when we think that we know, that's also a form of pride. Um, and that's why the the um, when when Shihazim Hafizullah and and Sheikh Abdul Hadi, before they start any lecture, the dua or the or the hamd, Subhanaka la almalana, glory be to you, O Allah. There is no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Um, and that already sits sits a very high bar in saying, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Subhanallah. Not only don't we know, we can never claim. We can never ever claim anything ever. Nothing belongs to Allah. The only thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human beings. Remember this. If we understand this point correctly, it will make a big difference in your life. A big, big, big difference in your life. Every single thing belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only belongs but is directly under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's control. 
not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala own and control that particular thing, but we will always have to remember that being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is not done in an absolutely perfect way because perfection can only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mm -hmm. only thing we have is choice. Every ability that we have that we think we can do, we can't do it. Allah is the one who creates effect. We, we, when we did the sifat of uh, Al-Qadir, uh, we said that Allah created the doer and the actions of the doer, which means it might look that Allah has given you life, now you can do X, Y, or Z. But Allah is the one who creates the ability in you to do whatever you do. You only have choice. And even your choice is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. So you actually, you, you have very little. Now, if we enter our lives and we say every single thing belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have no control over it, and we only have choice, it will make us a lot more humble uh, to recognize that everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. Amen. Is there anything, anyone else who would like to add? Did you want to uh, <coughs> see Shafi? Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Jazakallah uh, khair, Imam Salih. I just want to say is, you know, um, exactly what you say now is reflecting last week on the COVID and uh, the, the COVID-19 and the, the, the spider the web of a spider, how fragile it is, yet it is resilient at the same time as well, how it protected the Rasul Sallallahu um, you know, from, from the, the Quraysh at a very critical time, and hence Allah spread light through the barakah of that spider web to the rest of the world. And equally so, it is so flimsy and so thin that it's so fragile it can break so easily. So equally, so I think those are the comparisons we need to reflect. And the, absolutely, we are not in control of anything. That's the long and the short of it. Everything comes from Allah. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we're going to move on now. Um, Now, before I even move on, this name has a particular meaning, even if we apply the positive understanding of the name and not how we interpret the name when it is applied to human beings. When we say mutakabir, uh, you, you're talking about a person who's got a negative quality. He's full of airs, he's pompous, he's uh, uh, boastful, uh, you know, things like that. We corrected that when it's applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's an it's a elevated, good, positive quality. But every name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every single name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is something that, that's the reason why we have to go through the names. The names are there to explain to us how great and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah can do this. Allah can be described as that, 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 that. And the more we know about all of these things, the better we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. But that's just knowledge. Knowledge without action is limited. You've missed the boat. You've just stood at the shore and you looked at the boat. The boat is must. Knowledge, to get the benefit, you must apply the knowledge and put it into action. Otherwise, you're one of those people who will claim you have knowledge. But what does the knowledge actually mean? Every knowledge that we, all knowledge that we are exposed to must actually mean 
it contributes towards us as ordinary people in this dunya becoming better people. That's the purpose. Allah doesn't need your ibadah or my ibadah. We can sin, we can do good, it doesn't matter. Allah's greatness is unaffected by anything. Nothing Allah. affects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and total perfection. Subhanallah. So what is it that we must extract from this knowledge when we talk about emulating this name? Emulating means uh, to copy, to imitate. Now obviously you can never imitate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we should extract from these names things that we can introduce in our own lives so that it can make a change in the type of people that we are. So I'm going to throw the floor open again on, on this point. Uh, and here, if, if there's any comments uh, that anyone wish to make uh, at this stage. Come on, Oh, you might not be with us anymore. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Imam uh, Sali, yes. I just want to, <clears throat> can you just expand a bit when, when Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, the time of creation, um, and to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam in, in, in the clay form. And then they said afterwards, you know, um, Verily, that is knowledge that we did not even know of. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. That was the, 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 this thing. So basically, uh, it goes back to your previous, previous uh, discourses and discussions about the knowledge, the hidden knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the reason for creation and everything that came out of creation. Okay. Uh... It, it, it might take a longer answer than what we have, but I'll give a, a short answer and maybe we'll come back to it uh, on a, a follow-up session. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings, um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the malaika, and we must remember when shaitan, people have this uh, misunderstanding based on what Christianity has said. Sometimes we bring that confusion into our own belief system. Um, shaitan was not a malaika. Uh, he was a jinn of the jinn kind. Mm. He was a, a noble, one of the noble jinns who roamed amongst the malaika. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings, Allah instructed them to sujood. Hmm. Now, sujood is a form of worship for us. If we say sujood, we, we, we mean that it is a form of worship. Allah didn't instruct the malaika and shaitan to worship mankind. Allah, in fact, only wanted them to demonstrate their recognition and respect to this wonderful mm. creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And further on, uh, we, we, time allows because it's a question that has many different aspects to it, is that one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, elevated humankind to this extremely high level is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught human beings, insan, knowledge of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only creation, the only creation that was given knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names was human beings. Even the malaika didn't have that. And that knowledge was taught to the human beings directly. 
but this we we were in our uh, in 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 a state of our ruh uh, at the level yes. of our souls. We we didn't have human human form as as we as we have today. Except to say that that knowledge, even the malaika who didn't have it, had Allah instructed the human beings to teach that knowledge to the malaika. Allah it's, very, Allah. it's an extremely elevated kind of knowledge that one can associate with the kind of knowledge that the Arifin have, the Uliya, the saints, the prophets Allah, were Allah, given that kind of Allah. knowledge even while they were uh, 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 placed on earth. Some of that knowledge, which means that every single person, Muslim or not, Muslim or not, deep inside the inner secrets of the heart of every single human being resides True knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True knowledge. Yes. The people who, 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 who qualify to be of the Arifin are people who have been given access to that knowledge. Now Allah. we have a lifelong struggle, a lifelong struggle to remove the veils of darkness and light that surrounds our hearts that prevents us from benefiting from this knowledge that each and every person carries within themselves. Because Allah, if, the, subhanallah. if the barakah of that knowledge were to emerge, then every limb, every atom, every fiber of the human being would be in constant ibadah and in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, subhanallah. It's a state, Allah. It's a state that you, Allah, Allah. We, we are so weak, we will probably... Uh, May Allah make it possible that we, we get close to it, but we are extremely Allah. weak to arrive that. But that is the road that we need to travel. Where we come yes. from, when Allah created us, we were pure, pure, and actually had knowledge <laughs> that no other in creation ever had. But let, me get, let, let, let me get back to the, to, the, to the issue at the end. So to emulate this name, emulate, we said, means to copy. Yes. Um, let me just get back to the screen. Emulate, we say, what must we do to benefit out of this name? Yes. <laughs> I, th I think personally, my reflection on, on, on the, the emulation of this name, because this name, Al Mutakabir, is solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think as human beings, we should then try and reflect the opposite of this name. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Because our nature is of need. Um, like the Sali mentioned, the cooking earlier. You know, oh, I made a liquor, pot of food. It was so delicious. But we forget it is Allah that has... Um, made it possible for our bodies to be sustained through this food. He has created this food and through that we are sustained. Even the taste of the food is dependent. If Allah wills, it will taste very nice, inshallah. Um, so the emulation is, is, is rather in the opposite other than reflecting the name in its, in its essence. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good point. Uh, that you can't, there are certain names that we should emulate by doing the opposite of it. Uh, there are certain names like, for example, forgiveness. We must practice that and, and, and try and emulate it to forgive. But a name like Mutakabir is where we should assume the opposite of that because that belongs only to Allah. And the moment something belongs only to Allah, you can never claim it, and you should then do the opposite of that. Okay? We, we must remember, the moment you try and compete with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, directly or indirectly, now, 
we must also remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Allah knows what we are able to think, what we are able to work out. Allah created this very brain. All the thoughts in our brains were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing comes from us. Nothing is new. You can't think anything new that Allah doesn't know about already. So, Allah knows that we have been created in a particular way where we have certain limitations. As long as you don't consciously try and claim something that doesn't belong to you. If, for example, you're at the level of Islam, you're not, we, we are only, and let me make this clear, much of this, this discussion that we're having here now is based on the level of Iman and to some extent on the level of Ihsan. Not the, at the level of the Sharia, basic level of Islam, uh, you can say you've made the pot of food. You're not going to be punished. But Allah knows your ability and Allah knows what's in your heart and what you are capable of. So if you had the ability to rise above that level to the next level and you made no effort, then Allah will judge you. We are talking now at the level of um, Iman. As long as you don't behave in a way that's distasteful, something that Allah dislikes, because you are now setting yourself up as somebody who has independent ability to do things. And then on top of it, not only do you do it, you now claim it for yourself too. That is very, 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 very dangerous. And the moment you come boastful and whatever, and you, even though you want to hide it, even though you want to hide it, let me share a small experience with you, a personal experience. So I went into the whole Big Bang, how Allah created the universe, and I tried to simplify it. And Alhamdulillah, I was able to put it in a very simple way and put it in a book form. And I even gave the book to Sheikh Khazim Khafidullah and Sheikh was very pleased with it. I had now a personal challenge not to claim for myself, even though I was the one who put my name at the bottom of the book. And I'm every day when I prepare for these sessions, then I have to guard against not claiming things that doesn't belong to myself. Or trying to impress people by putting up information that is not generally known so that I can dazzle them or impress them so that in the return they can think I'm this or that or that or that. Indirectly, I would be setting myself up as a partner, trying to claim through that recognition and praise of people, I'm trying to claim what actually belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not easy. You fall in that trap, you're a human being. I'm sharing a very deeply personal uh, thing with you, and I hope you, you will extract from that to always guard against that. The thing is that as much as you hide it, people actually see through people who are trying to be boastful or want to show off or grandstand with what they have or what they can do or what they know. You put it in a by the way way, but people will see. So don't try and assign greatness to any person, but start with yourself first. Don't try and assign greatness or ability to yourself. Do you know where this comes from? <laughs> the moment you assign greatness to yourself or claim greatness or ability, the moment you recognize that, go home, go think about this on your own. Don't tell me, don't tell anyone. Just do a personal introspection. You know what that is? 
You're actually a slave of your nafs. Your nafs, the food of the nafs, is praise, flattery, you special, you great, all of those things, because the nafs wants you to be its slave, to do its bidding all the time. And the moment it's got you there, then it controls your actions. Afterwards, you don't even know why you do things you, because you are a slave. You're a true slave of your nafs. So be careful that you don't become a slave of your nafs. And one of the ways is to check when you want to claim things uh, or want to be seen as special or nice looking or beautiful or attractive or speaking well or whatever. Stay away from those things. Rather let people not praise you. <laughs> it sounds... For a human being to say, rather not let people praise you sounds silly. Because all our lives we want to be praised and we want to be recognized. But the fact that we are still trapped there shows we are the slaves of our nafs. I think this point about uh, being humble. Humility, humility, let me just cover the point in this sense, that humility is, is one of the qualities that will make it easy for you to make progress on this path of purification of the heart, of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humility. Even if you leave the other things and you focus only on one quality, I've previously on other occasions, I've said, don't try and change every single bad quality that you have all at the same time. At the end of it all, you're going to do very little to any of it. Rather choose one quality. If you can, choose humility and see how you can become truly humble. Because if you become truly humble, you are laying the basis and the foundation of becoming a true slave. And a true slave is the highest station a believer can get. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah took his slave from point A to point B into the, into the, 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 the seven samawat so that he could actually meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say meet, don't consider there was Rasulullah and there was Allah. Because now you're saying there are two things. We'll come to that at some other point. Allah is Allah. Allah is only there. There's nothing that exists in true reality other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we'll come to that point at, at, at some other point. What I think is, is um, important is that humility is a quality that will accelerate your, your progress on this path. And the way to do it is to try and become a slave. Now, knowing it's Allah and Allah is that great is easy in our minds at least for a start. But can you be humble to your child? Can you be humble to the, to the person who works for you? Can you be humble to your spouse, your husband or your wife? Can you be humble to other people? whether they've hurt you or insulted you or worked against you, can you be humble? That's where it's going to be tested. That's the big test. Humbling yourself first in creation because there you think it's okay to be better than them or, 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 or superior to them. 
but you must be humble towards Allah. But you behave in the total opposite way towards people around you. Because whether you're humble to Allah or not doesn't matter to Allah. Allah is perfect. Your humility doesn't mean anything. Allah doesn't benefit out of your humility. You're supposed to benefit out of that humility. And when you say you're truly humble towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a slave, then you won't be arrogant and vain and showing off and boastful in any way directly or indirectly to the people that you live with in your everyday life. Subhanallah. I'm just leaving this up because Sidi Yunus will say I didn't leave it up long enough for him to capture the slide <laughs> because he sends it out. If you didn't uh, give your name or, or, or details to, to anyone uh, yet, please send it to, to uh, Sidi Yunus, um, Ismail, and he will send you all the information of, 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 of that we have on the chat. Um, Okay, I'm just quickly gonna go through through the rest of it because I think we, we're going to run out of time. The first thing to say is that we should not act and follow the dictates of our nafs. We should always test where is the intention coming from? Is it coming from our nafs or is it coming as a desire to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And are we, are we doing it? Um, um, <laughs> sorry for that interruption. Um, never claim anything for yourself. Don't be arrogant. Because there's a hadith that says people with the atom's weight and we said how small an atom is. Uh, Aisha will tell you there are 50 billion atoms in one grain of sand. So how small is the atom's weight of arrogance? If you have that much in, in you, you won't be allowed to enter Jannah. So be careful. This is not something to take lightly. You may have done whatever you, you did, but uh, work on this thing about uh, arrogance and see it for what it is. And try and become true and proper slaves. And if you are a true slave, you will always be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever you do. Because you want to check, are you taking what doesn't belong to you? And are you humble enough? Are you remembering Allah? Are you grateful? All of those things will come to your mind if you become conscious of Allah. As a true slave, then uh, you must also know when the danger signs are there. When you see it in other people, their boastfulness, their pride, their showing off. Uh, when you see it, you must reinforce that in yourself. You see how terrible it looks there? Don't ever be guilty of that. That's how it looks to others, even if that person doesn't realize it, but that's how it looks. How doesn't it look in Allah's eyes? Who sees it all the time? That should be a reminder not to be like that and to work on improving your own humility. Um, always check your intentions. Even Sheikh Khazim Allah said to us, and he's a knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the living awliya. May Allah be pleased with him. May you always guide our hearts, our minds, our actions. Amen. He said that even he, a man who has fasted 
for 50 years, every single day, who has completed the recitation of the Quran more than 10 times every single month for 50 years, who has gotten up for tahajjud for 50 years, every single day. Of course, there were days when he was sick where he could not and so on. But for 50 years, a man like that says to us that even he has to check his near, his intention of doing things. Obviously, when it comes to the only uh, your intentions uh, needs to be safeguarded in a much more um, delicate way than we would do it in our own lives. Always ask yourself why when you're testing whatever you're testing, your, your near, your intention, why am I doing this? Am I giving into my nafs? Or I am doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, you stand in front of the mirror. Um, you're going to go to work or to a function or whatever. You stand in front of the mirror. So now you check, is your hair right? Is your face right? Is your beard nice? And whatever. And the women look at their scarves and look at their back colors and the shoes. Are, yeah, no. What do you think? And so on. There's two points here that competes. Allah loves beauty. But are we doing this, standing in front of the mirror to get the attention of people other than those that is allowed for you? want to catch the attention. Sometimes you don't even know who you're doing it for. You just want to look nice so that when you walk, you will be noticed. That is the nafs. But if you do it, Ya Allah, I'm standing in front of the mirror. Uh, you are beauty and I want to beauty myself, beautify myself for your sake. Make my inside as beautiful as my outside. That's a way to do it and to safeguard yourself uh, from doing it for the wrong reasons. Just before I go to the very last uh, point, which uh, the advice is that Chef gave us, let me just pause there and hear if there's any uh, final comments from people. Or questions, if there are any. Farid. Is there anything you wish to say? Um, no, uh, sorry, alhamdulillah. But, uh, this is uh, honestly a, a very um, always a difficult time for me that I, I struggle with, and it's not easy for many of us or for myself personally to just brush over. And uh, it takes a lot of reflection because uh, this affects each and every one on, I believe, in what, whichever level. You have to really be on the level of the purified heart in order to accomplish this. So this is uh, a, a very difficult state to accomplish and aim to, to emulate. It, it's, it, really, it really takes a lot to, to humble yourself. And I mean, in terms of all the categories and all the levels, it's, it's not easy. The best way is obviously to realize and be conscious of, of Allah and everything belongs to Allah and try to imitate and be a pure slave from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be conscious of Allah all the time. And I think what would help me is, uh, what would Amari said is to, to try to think before, what is your intention before saying something? Is it coming from the nafs? Is it coming from yourself? Where is it, where is it coming from? Before just acting. Alhamdulillah. 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 You see, if you've got something that you can take w w away with you, that you can personally go and work on, nobody needs to know about it. Nobody needs to know. You must just, out of whatever session, whether, I'm not talking about these sessions, whether you're in the Juma or whether you're sitting in Sheikh uh, uh, 
Waib's uh, lectures or wherever. Try and go into the lecture of wanting to take something out that you can work on. Even if it's one thing. And sometimes you don't have to take on another thing if that one thing is not. But work on something. And I would advise strongly, I advise myself, I must work harder on this one. I must work harder on this one. So that, because this is a quality that once you have this, it actually leads you to become a true slave. It opens many, 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 many other doors on this path of progress. This quality of true humility, being a slave, that's what Allah wants us to become. Allah is the master and we are the slaves. This quality, subhanAllah, there's two qualities. The other one I'll just mention for what it's worth is, is patience. Sabr. If we can match those two things and we just work on those two things alone, give yourself a task for the next 5, 10, 20 years, however many years you've got, I'm going to really work hard on working on those two qualities. Just two. We're not talking about 200. Just two. You will find yourself making progress along this path. Inshallah. Um, so we're going to come to the advice of Sheikh Hazim Hafidullah. Oh, we are so fortunate to have a Murshid like Sheikh Hazim to guide our hearts. Um, he doesn't have to be with us all the time. Let me just quickly say something about this. I know we are running into injury time now. But the role of the Murshid is to guide his followers. Guide to what? To purify your heart so that you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can't do it for you, but he will guide your heart. Now, these people are appointed and chosen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can choose them. You can't choose an awliya. You can't become an awliya yourself. Allah chooses his awliya and they are given tasks and they are given also certain tools with which to perform that task. And one of the tools that your murshid is given is to guide your heart even if he's in Jordan and you are in Cape Town, you don't have to physically be in his presence because we are talking now about something else. We're talking about the ghaib. We're talking about the unseen world. We're talking about knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not talking about the material world. The material world, you have to take a plane to go to Jordan. And if you want to take long to get there, you can take a bicycle. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you understand that your murshid is someone that's there to guide your heart, trust in that, that he is there to assist you, to guide you. Don't fall in the trap where some of the people who are opposed to our path of Tassel, say, yeah, you, 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 you place that man on a pedestal and no man should be placed on a pedestal like that. And uh, you, 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 Afrikaans, it's not that. He's been given that task to guide our hearts towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have a strong feeling that you think comes from your sheikh, then follow it. If it's good, follow it if it's good. It's probably the guidance that you were looking for. But trust it. Don't say, is it or is it not? Maybe, maybe not. Don't doubt it. If you say, yeah, Sheikh, guide me on this. Oh, everything comes from Allah, but you have been placed here as a means to assist and guide us. Then you ask for his guidance and his assistance. It's like you go to your teacher, I've got this maths problem. 
I got stuck here or here. Can you help me out to get to point B? That's the way. Not you believe in him. We believe in no one but Allah. Let the other people say what they want to say. We know how we believe and trust in our chef. We don't assign ability or power to him. He's got certain abilities if Allah wills that he has that ability. Okay, so um, he's given us advice. Sheikh's advice is on this name. Now we said what one of the things that we should try and do is we should take the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and choose one or two names, preferably just one for a start. And if you're not sure, you can change it afterwards uh, and, and change it again and change it again. But it's better to attach yourself to a name for as long as you can. Now, to emulate the, this name, and you want to attach yourself to this name and make this name your companion, then you have to admit that you are a slave and that you are nothing. You are low. You are low. And as a slave, you also acknowledge at the same, same time that Allah's majesty is so great that it is utterly beyond comprehension, beyond measurement, beyond description. The best we can do is say Allah is great. And we think if we say it louder, that makes it more. <laughs> but uh, Allah is great. And you are a slave. Start there if you want to attach yourself and get the benefit of this name. And what Sheikh says, if you connect yourself to this name, you will never humble yourself to people in creation because of their position or their wealth or the superiority that they have in the material world. You'll never do that. It doesn't matter who they are. Not in an incorrect way, but you won't assign ability to them that they don't have. And if you do that, then Allah will protect that person who has attached himself to this name from ever being humbled in the presence of others. Now, when we say humbled in the presence of others, Allah's not going to make him look small or insignificant. Allah will protect you from people walking all over you and taking advantage of you if you attach yourself correctly to this name. And attachment to this name means that your reliance and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is established under all circumstances. It's easy it's easy to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you need. It's very difficult to do it when things are going well. When you are comfortable, you've got no problems. Oh, I've got it sorted out. Uh, no, I don't have problems anymore. No, my life is actually going quite well now. That's the thing that you must still have the same trust and commitment and attachment to this name if you want to benefit correctly from it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Shukran. I'm going to end off and open the floor for the last quick round uh, before we end off with a dua. Um, you want to say something, Muhammad Farid? Uh, um, I just wanted to uh, comment on what Brother Sadi is saying, saying that one of the biggest challenges for us is, is to do the opposite of this, to lower ourselves. Because even in our spirituality, even in trying to ascend those levels of uh, spirituality, our nafs are challenged. 
uh, whether we are, because, because there's always the, 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 the idea that we want to achieve something so that we can be seen as something. We want to uh, achieve a, st a level of ascension so we can wear that turban, we can wear that orange or green scarf uh, so that we can attain that high rank. So even there, it's, it's, I think that this is probably the most difficult, as Bitsad has mentioned, the most difficult name for us to, uh, to not emulate, but to work into something that we can that we can in, uh, employ in our lives. And uh, subhanAllah, I think this is the essence because ultimately under the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are, we, we are nothing, we are obliterated in, in, in the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think subhanAllah, um, it's such a difficult, it's a, such a difficult, it's, there's such difficult actions to take, but, um, I mean, the fruits of, of, of that and lying on the other side, subhanAllah, is something that's so, so great. Um, you must remember, if we come walking to Allah, Allah comes running to us. Um, you make a small effort and Allah sees the sincerity. The rest you leave up to Allah. Allah will take care of it. Allah just wants to see that you are making effort sincerely. Then Allah will assist and respond. Uh, Sidi Yahya, is there anything you wish to say, my friend? Uh, uh, is there anything you want to say? I say the Imam Mani, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Jamaatul Muslimin. Laysa kamitri shay. Everything comes from Allah. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. We take it as that Allah Akbar wa lillahi alham. Shukran. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to say the final thing before we, we close off? Sheikh Mani, Jazakallah to you for your yeah. research and for your time, for sharing with expertise and knowledge, mashallah. May Allah benefit all of us, inshallah. Amen. Jazakallah. Amen. Amin. Shukran. Shukran. Shukran uh, to everyone. Um, I just before we, did you want to uh, say anything else, uh, Shafi? Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Um, I wanted to switch now just to some of the logistics. There's been a suggestion that we should have it, uh, our sessions only once a week. Um, because people's, people being back at work now and uh, all the other commitments, it's not so easy as it was before. Um, and uh, we should also make the time earlier between Maghrib or after Maghrib and we can actually uh, run a little bit later because you can't start immediately after Maghrib also. So the proposal is that we have it once a week now we can start from next week and have Wednesday still if you want to, it's up to the people here. And I'd like as many people to, to, to contribute so that we have the same participation and taking everyone along that we can take along. Uh, mm. That we have it on a Monday evening um, and that we start, um, say, quarter past or half past seven. Can I hear? Half past seven, inshallah. Half past seven. Okay, on, on a Monday. Half past seven, inshallah. Okay. Let's on a Monday. Okay. Allah. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, so can I take it that that is the uh, proposal then that uh, inshallah. We, will, we will try and accommodate people as much as we can? But inshallah, we'll start. Alhamdulillah. Amen. Uh, as from Monday at uh, 7.30. And um, if your numbers are not with CD Yunus, then please forward it to him so that we can send you the, the, the mail, uh, whatever it is that, that, that we have. For those who have, may have missed some of the um, previous sessions, um, I've uploaded all the, all the sessions 
from when we started, there's probably more than 50 or whatever on there already now. Um, we've covered the first part was we covered the, the, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealing with tawheed and the questions of predetermination. <laughs> ten, ten sessions we took just to complete that one. Uh, but um, if you want to, you can get uh, access to that on, on uh, YouTube. You just go to uh, Salimani's channel and it will be there. And if you don't know how to get it, then um, our administrator, Sidi Yunus, is, uh, Allah has endowed him with lots of technical skills. Way, 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 way past my, <laughs> my, so you will be able to guide and assist you. So we're going to end off on, on, on that note. Um, and uh, we hope, inshallah, you will all be able to join us on Monday. So we're not going to have it this Wednesday, no? Let me just okay. clarify that. Are, are we having it this Wednesday? Today is Monday. There's Wednesday before we get to Monday. Are we going to just start with next Wednesday? Just, just indicate with your hands. Uh, or you're not sure? I think, I think we can... I think we can have one session this Wednesday and start uh, our new schedule as on a Monday, inshallah. <laughs> Is, if that's okay, whoever can join us, we'd be grateful. Um, and I, inshallah, we will then have it Monday, but we uh, Wednesday, but we will start at eight thirty. Seven. Because uh, eight thirty. Eight fifteen is to on top of Ishai, and um, inshallah, everything of the best. Um, we're going to ask uh, Sidi Shafi to, to make dua for us. A pleasant dua. I <laughs> just, 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 just before you do that, let me just tell you what the next name is so that we actually know. Sometimes you look at the name and you don't really know what, what to expect. Eh? <laughs> you think this name looks very ordinary and then you're shocked to see. Um, And while I show you the name, let me just say this, al Kawi. Al MashaAllah. Strong. <coughs> I just want to say, inshallah, time allows, we're not going to do all the names, but we're going to go on to the other areas, for example, of what is the nafs, understanding what is the nafs. Get a better understanding of what is the malaika. One of the arkans of iman that we know so little about, we're going to talk about, if time allows, shaitan. And we're going to talk about the heart. And we're going to talk about the ruh. And, uh, well, it depends where time takes us, inshallah. But those are some of the things that we would like to, to get to. Uh, there's only about three, three or four names that we, we still have to do. So the next name is al Kawi on Wednesday at 8 <coughs> inshallah. And we're going to ask uh, uh, Imam Shafi to, to make dua for us, inshallah. Closing dua. Bismillah ar rahman Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawmi dini yaka na'abudu wa yaka nasta'in. Ahlina as-sirat wa mustakim sirat wa alladhina muta'alim. Wa'ali al-makhdubi alayhi mulatalin. Ameen. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد كل ما ذكر بواكر وكل ما غفل لنا ذكر الغفل وسلم تسليما عليه يا ربي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم اذ الله وان سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا نور تنورت من نور فالنور في النور في النور اللهم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين جزا الله وان خير محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah bless us all, forgive us all for our sins and our shortcomings. We praise you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we praise you, Ya Allah. Accept our praises, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, through your infinite glory and mercy, Allah, envelop us in your mercy and protect us, Allah, from all forms of test, trials, tribulations. Amen. Allah, have mercy on our families, our friends. Allah, those who have passed to Allah, fill the covers with nur after the qiyamah, Ya Allah. Those who are sick, Allah grant them coming at Shifat, Allah. Those who are in stress, Allah, remove their difficulties and their stresses, Allah. Whatever difficulties, Allah, replace it with Afiyah, Khair, and Barakah, Allah. We ask you in the name of your greatness and to the majesty of your 99 names, Ya Allah, Afur Rahim. Bless our Sheikh, Ya Allah. Bless all the Muridin. 
bless all the families of the Muridin and all our friends and our neighbors, Allah, and protect the Muslims, Allah, in these difficult, difficult times and all humanity as well, Allah. Accept that Allah to Allah, kind to fellow of the Pak, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bless us, Ya Allah, and forgive us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina zaban nar. Ya Rabbi, salli wa sallim daiman abada ala habibika khayri khalki kulimi. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yisifun Wa Salaam Al Adam Wa Salaam Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Al Fatiha Alhamdulillah Maliki Wa Shiyaka Amri Astayn Ihdin Surat Rabbi Sikim Surat Allah Islam Ta'ala Wa Khairi Al Mahdub Bi Alim Al Adam Jazak Allah Khair Amin Jazak Allah Khair Allah Bless You All Mashallah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Bless You All And My Apologies To You And Your Family For Going Way Over The Time If I If 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 I Err There May You Please make dua that Allah and you and your families and whoever else might be upset. Forgive me for my weakness. Inshallah. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan. Special salam to all the family. Amin. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khairan. Amin. Special salam to all the families. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Salam. Salam. Khairan. Mashallah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Muhammad Nasif, I'll call you right now. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh wa rahmatullah.